So this one, like, like the earlier version of the fader and EQ relationship when you're pushing up a vocal, this time I'm going to push up the guitar for the guitar solo. So many times when I'm pushing up the guitar for the guitar solo, I'm quite happy with the EQ. I don't want that to change. So I'm just pushing up the solo and the EQ will stay as it is. Sometimes, however, depending on the, the, the quality of the, of the guitar sound at that time, I might want to change the EQ. And I've, I've made an event that does this. If I hold down the color switch whilst I push up the fader, you see what happens? It gets a little bump on the EQ, just a, a little bit high mid, just to cut it through. And then as I pull it back down, it flattens it off again. So it's color switch plus fader above. Gives me a little bump in the EQ. And then as I pull it back down to the rhythm section, it goes back to flat. Okay, let's look at the event and see how we did that. Okay, so how did I make that event? As I pushed up the guitar fader, the EQ would change if I wanted to I wanted to change and sometimes it wouldn't change. And the way that that would happen is I would have two triggers. And for the, the change to happen, both of those triggers had to be active. So let's have a look at how we did this. So here we go, I've made an event called Guitar Solo. I have two triggers. The first one is a very simple one, fader above zero. The second trigger is the color switch pressed for that specific channel. And I have this as an and. This means that both of those have to happen for the action to occur. And the action, like in the vocal, is a, a change in the EQ. So let's go through them and uh, see where to find them. Okay, so I'll just delete both of these actions. So the first one was, it was an above. So it was a control continuous above. It was a specific channel and it was the guitar. Here it is. Fader above zero was in fact the trigger I needed. And then the second one could have been an or, but it is actually an and. And the second one is a switch. So it's a control switch. Again, it's the guitar channel. The switch is not the mute. The switch is not the solo or the attention. It's on the control surface and it's the color switch. That means for this action to happen, the fader has to move whilst holding down the color switch. Okay, now let's find the action. It's a change in the EQ. Just gonna delete that. So it's a change in EQ, so it's a, it's a con control continuous. Uh, it was the guitar channel. Here he is, the guitar. It wasn't the fader. Was it the dynamics or the inputs? It was the EQ. And in this case, it was the high mid gain. I just wanted to boost the high mid a little bit just to make it cut through. Again, I had a crossfade of a second. You just double click this to open it up. I want it to be a relative change again. And I want the relative change to be minus 3 dB. Okay. So that's on the way up. So when I hold down the color switch and push up the fader, the EQ will be cut. And then on the way back down, it's the other way around. When the fader goes below 0 0.7, in this case, the action will be put the high mid back to flat. Let's delete this and find that. Okay. So as I said, continues below. It's the guitar. I think it was minus 0 0.7. And then the action is put the high mid back to flat with a bit of a crossfade. So I'll delete that, add. It is a continuous control of a specific channel. Find it in the drop down menu, EQ, high mid gain, crossfade of a second. Again, I could choose any kind of uh, linear. I might want to sign because I might want it to, to start slowly and, and end quickly. Uh, but in this case, I'm happy with linear. And I want it to go absolutely back to 0 dB. So there we are. There's my guitar solo events.